all, we all like to drink and take showers. You know? um, and <laughs> welcome, welcome to worship on this first Sunday in Advent. Um, <clears throat> there are a few things, a bunch of things that I have to share with you this morning, so let me kind of go through them. Um, please, please, please stay today for congregational meeting. Um, this is uh, a, a meeting scheduled by our Constitution, and it is to consider budget and elected council members. And yes, um, if you are having thoughts still about joining council, please have them. Um, they can, there will be opportunity for nominations from the floor. And yes, you can nominate yourself. So. Um, Wednesday, this Wednesday, starts December, December the 6th, starts our worship with the other Eastern Area Lutheran churches. Um, and, and so you don't forget, United Fellowship in Wilson, St. John's Downtown Easton, Arntz in Forks, St. Paul's the Third on Newburgh Road in Palmer, and of course us. All right? Um, we'll be worshiping together on the priest Wednesdays in Advent. When this Wednesday we we start with United Fellowship, followed by St. Paul's the Third, and then we are the anchor. Um, Six o'clock soup and seven o'clock worship is surely here. There's surely, yeah. <laughs> We, we need, yeah, she, she hates it when I do this, but yeah. <laughs> we need soup, all right? And Shirley will coordinate it, so she will taste anything you bring to see if it will be uh, up to snuff. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> but we do need soup, and, and she is coordinating that, so please see her. Um, to that effect. Um, six o'clock soup and seven worship. Christmas Eve. Boy, that's right around the corner. Who gave it permission to be December anyway? Um, but uh, there will be no worship in the morning uh, as, as Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. Um, there will be a 4 p.m. service and that will be, it, they will our services will certainly will have candlelight. Um, the 4 p.m. will be geared for, for children. Um, the sermon will be a prolonged kind of story, children, time together. So we'll kind of have fun sitting up here together with the kids. Um, 7 o'clock uh, p.m. we will have uh, worship as well. That will be more geared for adults, a more quiet kind of thing, a prolonged time of candle lighting, that kind of thing. Um, so that's coming. Um, we thank Diane for her work on the, the church bulletin boards, um, kind of this way as you go out. Um, the one over by the kitchen, she wanted me to let you know, is interactive. So that means you have to go over there and read it. <laughs> um, so it's over there, go over there. <clears throat> um, and last, uh, but a bummer, um, as, as our audiovisual people came in this morning and tried to power up the computer, it would not power up. <sighs> what that means is, um, for Oh, and, and there was another, uh, all right. Um, um, I, I'm getting a note from my husband from the back, uh, from another announcement I forgot. Um, <laughs> but that means we will not be able um, to post online um, as we typically do. Uh, that, that posting from, uh, that you can find on our website and we will be able to, via Zoom, do audio only um, for those who are in um, that land who normally would be able to use the camera and be able to see what's going on. So, um, for those in that land, I apologize. You all, so you all know that that's what's going on. Um, 
we cannot know at this point exactly what the issue is um, because it just happened. Um, so, so that's that. Now, um, presents to bring in for the giving tree. Um, that is due when? I'm, I'm looking right at Jeff. Oh, that's right. <clears throat> Boy, I had that mixed up. Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, the time to go back. Um, <laughs> the tenth or next Sunday. So please have everything in by then, and thank you in advance for that. Okay. Enough. There was a lot, wasn't there? <clears throat> um, so we begin our time of worship this morning with prayer. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Both of our services, now this is a one service Sunday, but both of our services, we will be using the Advent um, hymns that are in ELW this, this season, um, and they will be Advent until the 24th, <laughs> just so you're aware. We start with, Hark the Glad Sound. Learn its lesson, 
As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. See also when you see these things taking place, that you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Be aware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey. When he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn. Or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. All those young or young at heart, come on down. Good morning. Oh, and where's your sister walking in the back here? Yeah. Well, family's a good thing, but what, what's Christmas really, really about? 
about, why don't we celebrate really, really? Thank you. Keep going. Yeah, we celebrate Jesus being born. Yeah. That's, that's really the thing. And that's what this reminds us of because Jesus brings us the kind of stuff that we all need all year. Right? Because you don't grow out of your pajamas, I guarantee you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, you're going to get taller. Well, there you go. <laughs> you, you do know you all were his size at one point. Yeah. <laughs> Mark doesn't have a birth. 
birth story like we're used to with Matthew and Luke, for that matter. But Mark has, has a, a way and a, and a move on this getting ready. And so the context again, again, is about getting ready for the death and resurrection. Because all of those little things I gave to the kids to color, that's where hope comes from. The resurrection. Peace comes from. The resurrection. Joy comes from. And love comes from. All there. That's why we celebrate it now. Because we all like this, this hallmark feeling of this peaceful Advent thing. Right? When we think of Christmas Eve, what do we think of? The pastor's sermon? <laughs> Thinking of a peaceful church holding the candle and singing. Yeah, come on now. <laughs> but really, and I'm not going to mess that up on Christmas Eve. I don't know. But really, Jesus comes to cause a lot of trouble, doesn't he? This, this whole piece, right, of, of being ready, this whole thing of watching for the, the tree's tender branches. All of those, those kinds of things in this text that we're talking about here. First of all, in Jerusalem, those, those trees' tender branches are, are as common there as, as us watching the maple leaves come on the trees and fall and we have to rake them up. Um, in, in the fall part, right? That's what they are. This is common, common stuff Jesus is talking about here. This is not something that people, oh, just, and, and pretty much this whole thing of getting ready. Please do not, like I said last week, do not take this text by any means to, to talk about end the times. It's not what this is about. Jesus is prepping his disciples for his death. As we do. It has nothing to do with the second coming. Like I said, how could he be talking about the second coming when he's still there? Right? So we don't want to go there with that. We can't go there with that. So what do we do to get ready? Do we all have lists? Stuff you got to do? Nobody wants to admit this one. <laughs> And you gotta get the cards, and you gotta get the presents, and you gotta make the cookies, and you gotta, and you gotta, and you gotta, and you gotta, and we don't like this time of the year, really, until this time of the year is over. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't giggle. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's so crazy, isn't it? We get so wrapped up in. The stuff we gotta do. And I'm not thinking that's what Jesus is 
talking about here, is it? I know this will sound radical. What I'm saying, toss it all out. All of it. And maybe spend some time at Safe Harbor. Check. Check your preparation by checking your relationship with other people. It's a different kind of thing. Don't we get so wrapped up, right? In, in what we're getting, what we're gathering, or what we're giving to other people so they can have more stuff. I've said this before, George Carlin's thing on stuff. Who remembers that? Yeah, I hear you though, yeah. I'm not going to do his language thing. <laughs> but this, this accumulation of stuff. If we all brought in all our stuff, there wouldn't be enough room in this room, would there? Hmm? Rummage sale. <laughs> <laughs> Rummage sale is what she said. Have you been in this place during the moment? <laughs> <laughs> and then there's people that call the day after the rummage sale and want to bring their stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and we get wrapped up in that, don't we? And we get wrapped up in that most, especially this time of the year. The stuff. And we get so blast busy that we forget who sits next to us. Getting ready has to do with caring about the relationships that we have with the people who God gave us. And it's a different thing to go to the food bank and feed them than it is to go to Target and look for the sales. Right? There's a difference there, right? Because you're talking needs versus wants. And that's, that's the distinction. Now, I'm not trying to make you get all guilty that whenever the present thing happens and you're opening, and you're like, well, don't tell Pastor what we did. All right? But try, try to replace some the caring about the relationship those who struggle to have none. Imagine, imagine the homeless soul sitting on the step. Boy, what a meal means to that person. That's preparation. That's how we get ready. Is to focus there. Take your lists. Make one, maybe two batches of cookies. That's enough. You hear what I'm saying? And focus on. That we celebrate that baby born, we will experience a love like we haven't experienced before.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, come into our hearts and our spirits and help us to prepare for the coming of love into the world, for the coming of your Son, who would die and rise to save us. Prepare, dear, help us to prepare, dear God, by building relationships, by caring for those around us, reaching out in love. Heavenly God, help us to trust you and not worry about when the end times might or might not be. Help us to know that we are in your hands so that we might focus on things you would have us to focus on. Dear God, be with those who struggle in this holiday season. Those who say goodbye to loved ones. Those who miss loved ones and who they have spent their lives with. Those, dear God, who need your care. Comfort, dear God. Lift them up. Help them and help us to be with them so they may approach this season and see its joy. Dear God, we ask for peace. Peace in your world. Peace in Israel. Peace in Gaza. Peace in Ukraine. Heavenly God, bring an end to Dear God, we pray for those who are ill. We pray that you would be with them and, and lift them up and into your care. That you would be with those who work with them and, and all those who, who work in the healing arts. This day, dear God, we name before you Diane, Rolf, and Mash Britt, Shirley, Mona, and Chell. Nat, Tricia, and Marilyn, Ron, Rachel, and Joseph, Matt, Andy, and Pam, Rebecca, Mike, and Charlotte, Nicholas, Rodney, and those who we name before you either aloud or in our hearts. And dear God, as we come together as a congregation to meet and talk about things important to the future of this congregation, we pray, dear God, that you would be with us, that our decisions would reflect your will. Dear God, we pray all these things to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
we prepare for communion, it was right here in front of me, and I apologize to the elders, but Carol's sister has passed from death to life eternal, and I would like to offer prayer for the family. Dear Lord, Heavenly God, we ask your blessing upon the Eller family and all the family of Peggy Carroll, who has passed from death to life with you. Dear God, help us to know that she is in peace and help the family be strengthened by the gift of love that you give. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We join together in the prayer our Lord taught us to say when we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen.